Right, I came across an interesting study the other day which was looking at pain thresholds and pain tolerances. So the first thing that people get wrong with this is they think pain threshold is the amount of pain you can tolerate, but toleration is that. Threshold is actually when pain first fires. So how much stimulus is required for pain nerves to first actually fire in the first place so you actually quantify things as pain. Uh, this can be obviously measured. You can measure it with nerve conduction studies to see the, the frequency of the speed because we know C fiber pain nerves are the slowest sensory nerve fiber and therefore move at a certain rate. So you can actually detect when these actually initially fire. And the studies they've done on this in the past is to use electrical current and they ramp it up in intensity and then obviously they can measure how much they're putting into it and then they detect when that nerve fires. Tolerance is how much you can bear, so the point at which you kind of say no, I can't take any more or pass out or whatever. Um, and everyone is different on this and there's been studies on men versus women and different things, but this study was looking at athletes versus non-athletes, so people who don't exercise and people who are exercising a lot. What was also interesting is they compared two different types of athletes. They looked at strength athletes and they looked at endurance athletes. And um, it was interesting because basically they found that in threshold and tolerance, the athletes generally were always better than the, um, than the non-athlete group. Uh, so both groups were better than the non-athlete group. Um, but there was a difference between the two groups as well in terms of the athlete groups. So the strength training group, the strength athlete group, uh, had higher thresholds than anybody else. Um, so they actually took, it was harder for them to exert pain, to bring pain on. But what was interesting is the endurance group actually had a higher tolerance, so they could bear pain for longer to a higher level. Um, what we don't know from this research, but it's interesting to try and extrapolate, is, is this something that makes them successful at doing that sport? So by having a high pain tolerance, they will become good and therefore excel within running. Uh, or an endurance athlete sport. Uh, and likewise, will being high pain thresholds make them excel at lifting heavy weights? I suspect it's the other way around. The human body is very, very adaptable. And uh, therefore I believe, but I don't know of course, that the training triggers that stimulus effect. I mean, when you think about it, it does make sense with them two, two uh, abilities, if you like. Lifting heavy weights doesn't last very long, so you don't have to tolerate pain for very long. So your tolerance is not going to be as good as someone who runs for a long distance, hits the wall and has to keep going. They have to bear pain for longer, so their tolerance would be driven higher over time. And within uh, the, um, the exertion, the, the intensity, if you like, the strength athlete is in more pain, if you like, in terms of effort and difficulty for a short burst of time, but it's more intense. So that means they will push their threshold up. So what this means is if you look at people who are in pain, it highlights exercise will cause an effect to improve pain tolerances and thresholds. So that means for anyone with pain, chronic pain, any, any injuries whatsoever, then exercise is good for pain. And we know this anyway, but it's interesting to look at tolerance and thresholds separately. Um, so yeah, it's very interesting uh, to see the differences as well between these two groups. And obviously between that, the athlete group, the training group and the non-athlete group. So anyway, it's food for thought anyway. And that's it for this video and I'll see you next time.